Hello, so today I'm going to talk about the core recycle. Core recycle is basically the recycling of lactate, or in other words, the fate of lactate. So before we talk about core recycle, um, let's talk briefly about how does our body produce or generate lactate and where exactly do we get um, lactate from. So... If we go back to one second, okay, so our body produces lactate from glycolysis, and if you can recall that glycolysis starts with a glucose. Um, which is a six uh, carbon, I'm just going to draw the six um, carbon backbone of the glucose uh, to simplify it. So glucose is basically going to um, produce two pyruvate. So uh, this pathway is called glycolysis. And every glucose that undergoes glycolysis is going to produce two pyruvates. And now the pyruvate's fate, um, pyruvate has two fates, okay, depending on the environment. So we have two fates of pyruvate. It's either going to um, transform um, or produce acetyl-CoA, And this is in the aerobic environment. So if we have an aerobic environment, pyruvate is going to go into the mitochondria and it's going to give us acetyl-CoA plus carbon dioxide and NADH. And um, then it's, it can go to the Krebs cycle. Um, and if pyruvate, if we have the aerobic environment, pyruvate is going to um, give us acetyl-CoA, we are going to need the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase. On the other hand, if we have an anaerobic environment, with the help of lactate dehydrogenase, pyruvate can generate two lactates. So this is where we get our lactate from. Um, glucose is going to undergo glycolysis. Uh, it's going to produce uh, two pyruvates. Pyruvates, depending on the environment, it will either undergo um, the anaerobic pathway or the aerobic pathway. An aerobic pathway with the help of lactate dehydrogenase is going to produce two lactates. If we have aerobic um, environment, pyruvate is going to uh, give us CO2-CO2 plus, CO2 plus NADH with the help of P, um, pyruvate dehydrogenase. So now that we knew, or now, now that we know um, where we get our lactates from, we can start talking about, <clears throat> sorry, we can go ahead and talk about the core cycle. I'm gonna uh, simplify the steps. I'm not gonna go into a very um, detailed uh, pathway just the general idea so you guys can um, familiarize yourself with it. So let's say that we have our liver. <laughs> That's a very bad drawing of a liver. Okay, even worse, but we'll go with this. And we have our red blood cell here, for example. Um, I apologize for my terrible um, drawing skills. So, so as we know, we have glucose here. Glucose is gonna undergo 
glycolysis. Uh, we are gonna produce actually let me do this let me make this a bit longer so this is glycolysis um, and we are gonna generate two lactates all right so we are also gonna produce two ATPs Okay, so keep in mind, if we have glycolysis, we are going to generate two ATPs and two lactates. And then, let's say that we have our bloodstream over here. Um, so lactate is going to go into the bloodstream. and into the liver so and then we are gonna convert lactate to glucose once again and the conversion um, of lactate to glucose this pathway is called gluconeogenesis All right, um, and we're actually gonna need six ATPs to generate glucose from lactate, and the cycle goes on. This is why it's called curry uh, cycle because the same thing is gonna happen over and over again, depending on our body's need of glucose okay so if we need glucose we're gonna um, convert lactate to glucose so our body can um, how do you say this can use glucose for energy if we don't need glucose then our liver is just gonna store glucose so we're gonna convert glucose into lactate in order for us to store glucose in our liver until we need it for energy. So this is a very brief overview of the curry cycle. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I hope this gave you um, an idea of the curry cycle and I hope it made sense. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.